Hello everyone, Robert Marzul here from Ramp Studio Comics and this video is going to be on page layout so I'm using Sketchbook Pro 7 here and I've already got my file set up and I'll go ahead and go over that with you real quick um, image size I like to work with 11 by 17 at 300 dpi that gives me about a 64 meg file you don't have to work that large if you uh, don't want to or your computer can't handle it uh, but that's just what I prefer and it gives you a nice uh, crisp line like that okay so the first thing you know everybody's question when they're drawing comics is where do you start and the very first thing that you probably should do you know amongst getting your story right obviously and uh, figuring out what direction that's going to take is page layout now there's a lot of different ways to approach this uh, your best bet is going to be you know a thumbnail where you rough out, you know, concept, uh, conceptualize the story. And, you know, just for, you know, something basic here, we'll do, you know, two people interacting. And we'll just do, there's a, there's a number of uh, camera angles that you got to look out for or, you know, try to fit into your stuff. So essentially, if you've got an opening shot, your first shot should always be establishing um, let you know the let the viewer know where they're at in the story so essentially you know we've got these two people interacting we've got an over-the-shoulder view keep the very initial stage very thumbnail very sketchy and loose uh, because you're really just trying to work out things like you know where the camera is where the people are on the scene how much background you got you know um, and don't underestimate one point perspectives. I had that problem a, a lot in the beginning. I'd always try to draw these ultra dynamic uh, two and three point perspectives. And you'd be amazed at what you can pull off with a one point perspective. So don't underestimate that. Use that as, uh, as much as possible. And then uh, you'll start seeing, you know, your opportunities for the two and three point perspective uh, for dynamic shots. So, you know, you've got these elements of the scene just really rough. You know, some people back here walking the street. These two uh, characters are, you know, meeting in the street for some grudge match or whatever the deal might be. So, you know, and this is very basic, right? But essentially, every, every time you change into a new segment of the story, you go to, you know, you're running through the story, there's a cliffhanger, and all of a sudden you go... And you change over to another, you know, area altogether in the story. That's when you create an establishing shot every time. Because if not, you're expecting the reader to just kind of fumble through and figure out that they've changed uh, sceneries altogether. So this is a, a way to keep your your reader, uh, you know, involved in the storyline. So the other thing is, you know, is a is um, as cool as it seems to break up your panels and do a lot of weird you know crazy panel designs and you know which is, this one wouldn't be too bad I guess but if you started doing too many overlaps and you know things behind other things and you know it can get confusing so you got to make sure that first you get your fundamentals down before you really go to approach any of that you know a lot of times when you study these these artists that have been drawn forever uh, they've already done many many books and then that's when they've built up their comfort level and they've also seen you know they know how to draw uh, storytelling that that works really well so then they can move on to that direction but first off you should really start with you know pretty basic panel layouts and get used to telling a story without all those other dynamics going on keep your uh, you know your panel borders relatively thin you know enough to have good separation um, and then once you start getting a good, good feel for telling your story with these types of panels then you can jump into the cool dynamic stuff and you know um, have a lot more you know overlapping panels and you know get that all figured out so you know the two are meeting up and this is a relatively boring scene I'll admit um, and then you know the next one uh, let's say that they're they're having a little bit more of a uh, a bickering match or whatever so let's do more of an overhead shot they're kind of posturing up getting ready to uh, you know take offense or attack one another so 
So I've got this, you know, kind of over the shoulder, you know, the ones maybe making a gesture of, you know, holding and shaking his fist or whatever to really say, you know, I'm getting ready to, you know, knock your block off, whatever. So you want to you want to get good at just picturing this and drawing drawing whatever you're picturing, just little to no detail. So you know even this this you know if I zoom up on this, that's a really horrific character, obviously. But what I want to show you is that you need to look you need to put down a shorthand version of your work. So you know say you got a hint of a sidewalk over here, you know maybe the front end of a car, and you got to make sure obviously that if you're going to do that, you draw the car over here. It's got to you know, there's got to be continuity with stuff like that. And also, um, another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, the position of the characters, and you never want to flip the camera, you know, for instance, you don't want the camera behind this guy's shoulder over here, uh, if this is, in fact, this guy right here. You know, you don't want to flip the scene without having reason to do that, like, you know, the character throws him over his shoulder or whatever. Uh, again, it just spins the viewer around and, you know, if you're not explaining that properly in the storyline or whatever, you, you start getting a very confusing uh, flow to your, you know, panel to panels. So, okay, so we got, you know, basic, you know, whatever, there's a car here, a little sidewalk or whatever, you know, a little grate where the water goes down, a couple little details that are easy to, you know, you can do a little flip of paper flying through, all these little tiny you know things the lines in the street all these little tiny things that you can fit around the perimeter that tells that story just as much you know obviously your focus is right here but you need these other little elements to you know put these guys in a place in a scene um, and then what I like to do is soft erase this down and build up from there and even as crude as that is that gives me a starting point you know, and what I actually, I'll show you what I really like to do, um, is just first make a layer for my borders. Grab this tool here, and just drop in a, oh, oh something to keep in mind with Sketchbook Pro. Whatever brush you're on will apply to these shapes, so keep that in mind, which is really handy, by the way. But, okay, so there's there's my uh, my little border. And I'll just go ahead and duplicate that. That way I got some uh, nice even borders. I'll slide that over. Make the middle one just a bit skinnier. Like so. I'll grab that first one. I'll duplicate it again. I'm just holding and dragging. And I'll move that over. And I'll get it spaced. You know, these don't have to be perfect. Um, Command E or Control E, depending on what you're using for a computer there. And then I'll move these over all together now. Now keep in mind um, this template here that I'm using. If you look at these lines, these are my my safety guy, you know, my safety lines or whatever. So anything past this edge right there is uh, what's commonly referred to as no man's land. Uh, you can do a little bit of art there, but you definitely don't want anything that you're worried about. Uh, fitting into that area now this is your safety zone the inner dotted line and then all through here you can do some other stuff but as you work to this edge here you want nothing that's gonna hurt the story to be lost you can see where it says crop and all that so you you basically just have to keep that in mind and it's real easy to forget about that and just start drawing cool pictures and then all of a sudden something gets cut off and you're really embarrassed when your your book gets printed Okay, so now I'll go back to my sketch. Actually, I'll name this one, drag and rename. Let's call this uh, Borders, just like so. Go back here. Okay, so now, now that I've got my roughs in there, I actually need to move those over just a little bit. Them. Okay, so now that I got my roughs in there, I can just basically, you know, take it another level. Now, keep in mind when something this this small is, uh, you know, your panel, your shot, 
you don't need a lot of detail. You want to give just enough information where, you know, it's apparent what's going on in the scene, but you want to make sure that you don't over detail something like this <clears throat> that is going to be shrunk down and then that time and energy is going to be wasted when you could have spent that time and energy on a cover piece, uh, a splash page, um, whatever. You know, the, the more important aspect of a scene like this is composition, uh, good shadows, you know, things that make it pop. You know, detail isn't, want, isn't really top of the list on a shot like this because, you know, like for instance, this arm looks a, little, a bit funky. You know, so I just keep working on elements of it that, that don't look great right until I get something that pops and, you know, sings to me or whatever. You know, maybe this arm is uh, dropped down more, tucked to the side. You know, and that's, that's basically how I draw. I just keep moving things around until I get something that looks right. Um, it doesn't always happen right away either, so... Don't feel bad if you keep having to resketch and I always pan back and see where I'm at. So I'm just trying to show that maybe this guy is, you know, waving his fist around or something like that. This one, maybe he's a little more nonchalant. You know, I don't have a storyline in front of me, but you should always have, obviously, some synopsis and idea of what's going on. But to me, I'm just saying, okay, these guys are having a, you know... Uh, hissy fit in the middle of the street about something and since there's no cars around you know then this one back here there obviously wasn't a, a car accident they're just uh, you know getting ready to battle it out for some reason that unbeknownst to the viewer at this point so this guy's more confident he's just kind of standing his ground and you see I'm trying to draw this where you know there's definitely a downward perspective on that pose you know, and remember, you know, the same perspective rules apply. Um, so if you need to, you know, if you're having trouble with the scene like this, like for instance, this guy looks like he's in this perspective, right? Control Z back or Command Z, whatever. But this guy looks like he's more in an up and, you know, kind of a, a less, um, what's the word? less in perspective or not as uh, not as quick of a, a fall off or something so I need to you know keep that in mind as I finish this scene to make you know I can make the legs a little smaller as they point down uh, the, other, the other thing to uh, create foreshortening is to not only make them smaller and pointed as they, they go away from the viewer of the camera also to shorten them just a bit and that's going to make it appear that his legs are more in perspective and then obviously the upper body would be more predominant because it's closer to the uh, camera and you learn all that from studying your pictures because honestly it never looks right until you kind of get towards the end of it um, but you start looking at photos and you realize that um, things do look awfully weird in extreme foreshortened perspectives there's a lot of distortion there, so you got to get used to seeing that and drawing that in your stuff, and you'll you'll get convincing uh, comic book panels that way. So again, just a few of the little details. I'm not going to get too overly into this, just so I can explain, uh, you know, more of the overall composition of what I'm trying to show you. Again, little little flying piece of paper, no big deal, but it's stuff like that really helps sell some of the stories you know just put a little shadow under it you know you could put like little cracks in the road not much because you again you don't want to over detail this scene uh something you could do though is a little bit of line work in the edges you know just to show that the the street's got a little bit of grit to it the shadow under the characters to help define your light source and to place them, you know, to ground them into the scene. And as far as the car, you know, just pull some reference real quick, look at it, and then, you know, do a shorthand version of it. You don't have to, you know, if you look at a lot of uh, good comic artists, they don't, they don't draw every single line. Um, it's amazing what they really do. They, they draw more the shadows of the object 
but then also they have like a, a really great way of shorthanding I call it shorthand of shorthanding the artwork and giving you the pertinent information a nice quick easy read and the more that you can do that you'll uh, you know your books will come out on time and your stuff will look nice people will think it's extra polished and really it's just you know you learn to not overdraw and that's a, that's a tricky thing to get through to people um, myself included so so again you know you picture that you know I obviously can't tell what size you're looking at it on your screen but that might be enough detail now I'm not saying that's that panels done I'm saying that with the right shadows um, and direction what you basically want if I had to picture the way the viewer was looking at this scene so far before you know completing it uh, your eye is going through here down to here down to here it almost makes sense to have the action in this scene or um, area of influence or whatever you want to call it right about there and then maybe have it just widen out like that so that would be your your flow you see that that's that's what I'm seeing anyways you know there's a lot of different ways you can take it um, but that to me would you know make the most sense with this type of layout okay so now you know I want to get back to this one because I want to show you again how you can accomplish this with the one point perspective and you can make this functional that it doesn't need to be a lot more complex than what you're seeing here to be a decent panel okay so I'll go back to my borders I'll grab my shape tool uh, let's see I'm gonna just keep this very basic as far as the um, borders go now keep in mind as you up the brush size that'll uh, that'll up the border that you draw with this tool and the bracket keys increase and decrease your brush size in uh, sketchbook pro okay so now I'll uh, soft erase this down again oops always forget to drop that tool just click on it to drop it it goes back to your brush tool okay so now uh, this is obviously my really rough thumbnail of the scene if I wanted to make this a bit more dynamic what I would do is I would I, I gotta figure out who my hero is right uh, this guy appears to be more confident this guy appears to be you know somewhat angry shaking the fist like he's about to throw a punch whatever um, so we'll say that the hero is the confident guy right there so my heroes here my protagonist or I'm sorry antagonist is here so what we'll do is even and we got to watch it because the, the perspective is here so far and we could change that um, our actors are here the background is secondary so essentially I want to make it look like this character is actually a, a bit larger um, in this scene even though he's further back in the, uh, the panel I want to make him appear to be you know more heroic and a bit larger in this scene this one will be and I shouldn't even say larger this one could be larger but he's gonna be a little bit more hunched over um, which will give him just a little bit more of a villainous ominous kind of look so we'll have him kind of hunched over or we'll do you know the big back muscles whatever Okay, so there's that dude and then let me change this just a bit I want him to look a little bit more heroic so maybe what I'll do is I'll give him the arc to the back and I'm gonna change the perspective because it needs to match this scene down here so I'm gonna give him maybe I'll push him back a bit in the scene select that size him down again I'm gonna keep him taller as far as the scene goes but I'm going to give him that heroic stature kind of an air of confidence and
you see how rough I lay this stuff out. It's really, really scratchy at first. Okay, so there's our hero-esque, you know, character. Again, I keep soft erasing down. These are just my roughs to get it, you know, get it going. I always zoom in just a little bit, give myself a little bit more real estate to work in. You know, because the other thing about the establishing shot is I want this to, you know, stand out and have a bit more detail than the other shots. You know, the, the other way I look at it is this. If you give your readers some eye candy in the first shot then maybe they'll forgive you for the next couple that have a little bit less you know they can it's all about I would say like memory you know memory that plays through in the rest of the panels you know you can forego a little bit if you give them a nice shot with a lot of detail and a lot of again eye candy and stuff to chew on then the next few panels can can kind of float through off that um, you know, not to be cheap or, you know, but everything's a deadline with this stuff and speed is of the essence. You know, you got to be able to draw fast and some stuff you got to be able to, you know, unfortunately accept, even though it's not your, you know, maybe not your best work and you'd like to do better. But I don't know, to me, um, work that's printed and done is better than, you know, your best work that sits in your closet. You know, so you gotta you gotta come to terms with that and get stuff out the door. And I've learned I've learned that one from uh, storyboard work because there's no uh, no exceptions. Deadlines are steep, and you gotta pump the stuff out. And sometimes you the stuff you think that uh, people may not like they love, and then other times the stuff you think that's great somebody's got a problem with. So it's just you know you get over it, but. And I hate drawing a fist from this angle. I always seem to draw it all old school Nintendo looking, but we'll fix that up. Okay, so there's there's our hero-esque character. And then I just start nipping and tucking and making little changes. I got his head setting a little too low. Yeah, maybe a touch too big, put a little bit of an arc on it, or tilt. Okay, so now, and real quick, I'll show you what I was talking about with the changing of the perspective. If we take this perspective, which I think works decently enough, uh, but if you notice, Here's our hero, right? I'll put a well, one next to him. That's the same guy. Well, the only bad thing is the perspective here is pointed way off this way, and here it's not. So it's there's an error there, you know? So essentially the perspective needs to be behind his shoulder, going in that same direction. So it needs to be, you know, going like this. So what I'll do, just to make this easy on myself, is I will select our characters that's the only thing I want to keep at this point. Command X, Command V. Move them back up into position. Go back to the other layer and erase. There we go. So now I can redraw that perspective without worrying about my characters, which it's not a big deal. They're still very sketchy, but um, so at any rate, now I'll draw the perspective more like this, and it helps to be able to just draw through them and not worry about it. So a little bit of, you know, but again, this is still a one point perspective. There's no need to do some advanced, you know, multiple perspective right here. I, I don't think anyways, you know, do what you want. Um, backgrounds really aren't my cup of tea, so to speak, but, um, you know, they're a necessary, very necessary um, thing that I have to tackle. So I'm not going to skimp out on them, but 
um, I think that one point perspective there will do the trick. So, you know, I'm picturing that we got some store windows here, you know, um, little doorway here, and maybe another store window in the end of the building or something like that. Trim work there, another segment to the building. And then we've got this car right over to his back shoulder. Looks like it's, you know, only a car length away there. So we want to try to keep that same distance and, you know, size of the car in relation to the characters. Okay, real rough, but get the idea down and then go from there and fine tune it. I haven't even whipped out the extremely awesome perspective tools yet that this software has. So I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so there's my extremely rough, nasty background. But it does the trick, it gets us to the next stage. So now we take the perspective tool and that's gonna, again, that'll be a one point. Find my line, bring that up. And essentially what I do here is I just keep moving this around <clears throat> and then I use the interactive cursor there to find approximately where I'm at with the line work. And I think that's almost there. I'll move it a little off. Let me bring it out a little bit more. And the beauty of this perspective tool, you get it in place, you zoom in. Keep in mind, I'm hitting spacebar to get that quick zoom icon, just so you know. So you can move around, you just hold the spacebar, you can zoom in interactively, you can rotate, all with all just by holding the spacebar and then you let it go, it goes right back to the tool you're on. One of my, uh, my favorite things about this software because it lends to speed. Okay, so there's my roughs, right? I'll... Uh, I actually like to do another thing where I add a layer and I drop in a, where's my color here? And put that on screen. And everything below that now will take on that color property. Actually, let me do a little bit brighter blue. Did I do it? Yeah, I did. Okay. So there's my blue line. I really like that effect. So you just do that by adding a layer, putting it to screen, and then dropping in. You know, it could be red, purple, whatever color you want. Uh, remember to go back to black so you can keep doing your art here. Okay, so now, where am I at? Um, I've got, this is my rough. i got to put my perspective layer back on, or perspective tool, I should say. And I'll add another layer, and I'll now be above the blue line and I'll refine my shapes a bit more and you see I draw right through the characters I don't worry about it you gotta recognize when you miss your perspective like that right there Now if you try to do that, see how it's not drawn for me, hold space bar, zoom into this real close, and now you'll be able to draw. It just, it reacts I think uh, a little bit differently based on how far you are away from your, your sketch. Even right there it's not drawing. Only problem I have with this uh, perspective tool, other than that it's fantastic. So, so now that I'm in here real close, I'll just fill in a little bit of detail. I bring a little put some windows in here, something like that.
and draw. Yeah, that's probably my only pet peeve with the software. But other than that, it's fantastic. And so if you guys at uh, Sketchbook are watching these videos, if you can make that a little bit more responsive, sweet. If not, I still love the program. It's, uh, it's amazing. I also use uh, Manga Studio, which I'll be doing uh, training or courses on that on, on here also. Uh, it's still a fantastic software, but to me, the Sketchbook... Um, 3D tools are just a, or I shouldn't say 3D, I'm sorry, perspective tools are just a tad better. Oh, and quick tip right here. Say I want to get this line to line up there, uh, but I don't want to keep guessing, even though, you know, it's not as detrimental. I could draw it there, it's probably going to look fine. All you have to do is start here, pull over, hold your place, hit Control Z, and now where you pick up is identical to that line. So just a little little tip for you there. Same thing with these lines, pull here, stop, control Z, draw, do the same thing here, control Z, draw, and you're getting identical lines, and you don't have to go back and erase, basically, is why I do it this way. I just like knowing that they're perfect, you know, I could, again, I could just go zip, zip, no one would probably ever notice, but to me, the extra little few seconds are worth it to know that I, I did my job properly okay so now we're starting to get a little bit of that scene back there it's still not you know it's not amazing or nothing but um, the other thing that you can do is start putting in you know little bits of brick uh, elements that you don't you know keep in mind you don't have to draw every brick you know you just basically do a few and you can even save these and copy them and move them around or whatever. Um, I, it's it's pretty quick and easy to draw them this way, so I just do that. You see, I have to zoom in pretty far um, to get those in there, but it's not a big deal. Okay. And I generally like to block my shadows in before I do those because to me the shadow, the shapes and shadows are more important at this stage and then I can fill in little bits of texture and detail at the end. And again, I'll just kind of go around and I'll do, you know, little, little bits of that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, I still got to leave that, there's not enough uh, detail there to drop the other line work, but almost, yeah, pretty close. But what I'll do now is erase this background down a little bit more, especially up in here, so I can start seeing my line work a little bit better. But I want to get that, uh, that car filled in. Now, I do recommend on something like this just to grab some reference. Also, make sure that you drop the perspective tool. It'll go back to your line work. I'm still drawing in my blue line. Uh, if I don't look at perspective on cars, they all come out really boxy. Just, you know, really strange because I have done car, custom car graphics like for a good part of my life. So I should know cars like the back of my hand, but I don't. I, I can draw a few basic cars without looking at reference. Um, just a lot more into drawing people, so um, I definitely recommend looking at reference and when it comes to cars, buildings, and things like that, but to keep this relatively short, well, it's already kind of long, but to keep it, you know, relatively short, um, I would just recommend, like I said, if you're having, a, having any troubles with something like that, just grab yourself some reference, don't feel bad. Uh, for cars, it's important because, you know, I honestly don't even feel bad if I trace a car. I know that sounds horrible, but it's, uh, you know, they all look identical. So all the models are the same. So 
unless you're sitting there wanting to you know show some customization to the car or draw some futuristic ride that doesn't exist yeah that I would draw freehand entirely but it really doesn't serve a purpose when they all look the same um, but you know if that makes you feel bad just put the car put a you know the picture of the car up here and then draw it down here you know then it's it's you drawing it it's not a big deal but you'll see this one <clears throat> This one comes out pretty ugly because I'm just not into drawing cars for some reason. You know, make sure you get the nice heavy shadow underneath. And same thing, do the, um, you know, just little hints of detail, not much. And just keep soft erasing down and building back up. And actually, I'll go to the, I'll add another layer over top. I just try to refine the lines a little bit more. Yeah, I think this tire would be pushed back further. Okay, and then let me find the building line work and let's go ahead and erase some of that so we can see this a little bit clearer. So the scene's starting to pull together, you know, it's still, still a little uh, quirky, you know, got to keep working on it. But the trick is, well, in my opinion, the trick is to not get so bent out of shape at this stage. You know, you're still fine-tuning your artwork. So, you know, you just kind of work it together. And, you know, if, if something, you know, for instance, I could pick apart this car really bad and say, okay, the top of the car is too short. The front end is too long and awkward and almost out of perspective. The tires look a little wonky. So, you know, but it's it's a background element. And I would probably just add some heavy shadows and fix some of the line work. And mainly the shadows would help me point to this character in the pose. That's what I'm trying to sell right now. So then, you know, the way I look at it is this. You've got your foreground element, which are these guys, right? That's your your number one element right there. Actually, let me do it like this to show you. Grab uh, some red, draws attention, and a bigger brush. Okay, so here's our foreground element, our, our main selling point. So this is where the story is happening. Even though the establishing shot is, you know, telling us the rest of the panels and where they're at that's that's all good and dandy but this is our our first element um, our second would be anything in this region here the car the sidewalk this is this really isn't a three element type deal but it, this would be your your middle ground 
and in your background which really these are kind of one and the same but you, you know you should get my meaning that essentially that's how you lay out your scenes you know so down here again your foreground or your main actors your heroes your action spot is there and you know then again I only have a second second one there too but your third would be maybe the car or a person back here you know so that's essentially how I break down each of the scenes you know it's not always that simplistic but uh, it's a good rule to follow so I'm going to delete that get this back to black okay so back to the characters real quick actually I'm going to even separate this guy I really like layers if you can't tell and I'm gonna make him a bit bigger and then cut off in the scene so the camera looks like it's right behind his back I think it'll make the shot look a little bit more dynamic I could even have his arm breaking the border like that but I don't want to get too much into that right now because as I said before in the basics you really shouldn't you want to get the basics down before you start doing that and if you listen to any of the big guys uh, that talk about drawing comics I'll tell you that that that's something you work you work up to you know if you don't have the fundamentals of uh, good storytelling good anatomy stuff like that you really shouldn't be worrying about breaking you know rules essentially breaking borders but almost breaking rules the guys that are really good can do that because they have so many strengths going on uh, going on in other areas of their their art ability so save that for when you you know you're a little bit more refined and better at what you're doing and the other the other thing to remember is that you want to use that sparingly if you overdo it it actually pulls the reader out of the uh, you know out of the story and uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to propel them through the story uh, when you're breaking the fourth wall all the time so all right so this guy is pretty ticked off he's leaned over ready for battle he's got his fists up this one looks funky obviously so let me see if I can fix that um, big problem I have is sometimes drawing things in that you should just omit or hide so let's try that so as you know maybe you just see in the back of his arm yeah that looks more believable right I always forget where the back muscles are, but they're somewhere in that region. <laughs> and I'll grab some anatomy books if I have to to fine tune that. Somewhere like that. I know they all pull away from this point. There's a little divot right there in the back. You always got to remember that. The traps go around there and around. These go down and around, but they all pull. They actually all pull like this away from that spot so but this isn't about anatomy this is just about scene layout so we'll get to anatomy later okay let me erase some more of these background lines Okay, so those forms are starting to protrude out. We're starting to get a little bit more idea of what's going on in the scene. Uh, now what I'm going to do is do my really rough thumbnails down here, which keep in mind you would generally rough out the entire thing all at once and then do levels of uh, transition over top like I've been doing. So what I'm going to say here is that, okay, they're arguing here. Maybe he stepped a little bit closer. He's waving the, you know, the hand around, which this isn't really a very threatening pose. This looks more threatening. Um, but here will be the swipe, and here will be the retaliation. So this guy is going to take a swipe at him. So let's do 
now we've got the camera we always want to move that camera around to show you know you don't want to just have a stationary camera um, in the scene it's it's boring so here he's taking a swipe let's do let's do the arm the shoulder so you get a little bit of his head but not much over the shoulder you know it's a kind of a punch here this guy you know our hero dips down I don't want to do the real stick figure type characters. Um, so this arm is like the the main actor of this this shot. Bigger than life, you know. It's, it's massive, muscular arm. It's our chance to sit there and draw some, you know, ripped muscles and you know a little bit of the back and the the stretch or whatever. And again, his head's way over here, so we barely even get any of the head in there. He's he's swinging so hard. He's right out of. Uh, right out of the scene so something somewhat like that he dips down so there's the swing and the miss and then you gotta do the retaliation now to me you know if his left hands down here that's what the one that's ready for the punch so we'll do the upswing with the left arm something like this have the back really arched always shows that you know he's really putting everything into it the leg back this leg up this hand tucked back for another counter punch if need be so there's the pose of our hero and then this guy that just got belted um, we could either do I guess the popular one is where the jaw screaming is right here you know, and then you see the the chest taking up most of the scene like he's flying back and then maybe do like a I don't know a, a hand right here that's you know gripping in pain and he's kind of just you can see the pain in his hand or whatever you know and then maybe one of the legs up like he's really flying back, losing his you know balance, maybe another leg pointing down, but you don't see much of it. So something like that. So that's our, you know, forgive me, this isn't perfection or anything. Um, but that's our that's our thumbnail of the scene. And then you know you can do now that you've done background elements here and then here, you really don't need them here and here. So what you can do is a little bit of intensity lines, you know. And you really could go with the punch here. Let me do that actually. Because this is more of a, a motion of a swing. So we'll just do motion lines like this to show the action of him dipping down and the punch coming this way. Okay. And if you remember, like I said, the, the way I visualized the story was progressing this way, down to here, over to here. So see, we still kind of landed in that area. Um, and he's, you know pointing this way so you know all these things help the viewer f uh, flow through the story so now and then the impact and him flying back that kind of breaks the flow just a little bit I guess I could have turned him a bit and had him flying back this way would have made more sense because then it points the viewer right to the next page um, but I, I don't think that's a that's not gonna you know not gonna kick it out of bed so to speak so um, so now the impact is here you know, there's the impact of the punch, and we'll do some, you know, speed lines or whatever pointing to that. Okay. And so now some refinement. Let's see where we're at. This is all pretty much on the one layer, so that's good. I'll just tone this down just a little bit. Um... And I'll just start adding some layers over top. I'll bring them above my blue line. And it just gives me an opportunity to refine it a little bit more. And you know, the beauty of this, once you get all this down like this, now you can start thinking about other things. You can start thinking about, you know, what the characters might be wearing how many shadows are in place and the you know where they're at in the scene 
um, you don't have to think as much about the fundamental stage of the uh, the composition's done. You know, the shapes are in place, so you just get to refine them and you know start having a little bit more fun. Yeah, put a nice big shadow under his, his head, make that pop out. shade the whole midsection and blow the knees And another great thing about digital is you can always add too many shadows and then tone them back. It's better. It, it depends on what your style is like. For me, I'm, I'm kind of uh, scared of shadows, which is unfortunate. Shouldn't be. I'm a full-grown man. But, you know, I always hesitate to put enough shadows in there. And you got to remember to do nice, heavy, you know, even though this is, you know, looks, well, I picture this being a daytime scene. Um there should still be heavy shadows to make the artwork pop so it's it's better to when you're like me where you're you neglect shadows or you're, you're light on them it's better to overdo them overindulge in the shadows and then uh, erase them back if you have to because if not you're basically just um, you know you're just you're not putting enough of the, the darks in to make the artwork stand out. And since it's digital, it's really easy to erase. There's no worry about, oh, I'm going to mess up my Bristol board, or I'm going to have to take this to the light table and fix it, or whatever. There's, there's none of that, so you should really just play around with your shadows and get a nice feel for what looks cool. Right, it looks silly because I don't have any uh, defining suit traits, so I'm mean, gonna throw some of that in there. Just even though I have no clue what these guys are, I'm just trying to explain how to lay out a scene. But they gotta have some kind of suit. So let, me, let me fill a little bit of that in there. We'll give this guy a black uh, black mask kind of thing. Her whole upper piece like that, and the matching gloves probably and our hero will have him the beacon of the beacon of light let's just give him a star in the chest okay and keep in mind I could just drop in some perspective lines if I needed to but I'm just going to do this freehand. It's going to look a little more, you know, uneven or whatever, but not a big deal. Now what I plan on doing is explaining all the aspects um, from start to finish on all the different elements of creating, you know, comics. So essentially, I'll be taking you through, you know, uh, the different dynamics 
of each aspect and you know you, you let me know what questions you have in the sections below and I'll just keep addressing them and hopefully get everybody you know happy with the content that we're uploading on this new channel so you just tell me what you want to see in the future and I'll make it happen and uh, yeah if you can refer you know anybody that's trying to learn this type of uh, craft and hone their skills in art I greatly appreciate that and we'll all grow together because I just want to you know keep making new content and keep this channel growing so even something like that even though that's really you know just basic but um, hopefully it'll give you an idea of how to form these you know the real meat and uh, meat and the potatoes of what I'm trying to explain is right here um, the refinement that's that'll be another video you know um, I want to make sure that these are specific to certain elements you know and then so when you come in here and you're looking for just how to worry about page layout well, that, that's what this video is about this is page layout and roughs basically and then when we talk about shading and refining lines uh, that'll be its own specific set of videos or video or whatever you know because obviously you know to to address them all in one is just it's a lot of stuff there's a lot to making you know good comics you know it's especially if you plan on making heavy detailed artwork um, then yeah you got a lot of stuff to cover so and just essentially what I'm doing I just keep adding little details until I get there um, and then I keep uh, if it's not good enough or it doesn't look right then I soft erase it down and I go at it again and I just keep repeating that process till I get something I'm happy with Okay, so what this guy have? He had like a black mask. Fill this all in. Okay, sorry I'm getting quiet here. I'm uh, concentrating on what I think I should work the scene out to. But hopefully this gives you a good clue of, you know, where to take your panels and how to lay them out and how to steadily refine them. If I was going to carry this to a full finished rendition, um, I would just have to keep putting, you know, a few, you know, probably good, I don't know, to fully pencil this the way I I'm seeing it now. I would probably still put in another two, three hours. So, um, I would say I can't really do that and show the exact detail that I could put into it, but hopefully this gives you a perspective on how you could detail it. You know, and you just keep grabbing those little traits that you see from these other ones, you know, I keep drawing in the little 
shoulder piece I gave this guy just to pinpoint that it's that character. And this guy, you know, I do the big heroic punch. Really arc the back. And the, the scream, like, yeah, whap. And, of course, you could always do the, you know, the whap, whatever. Do your cool block letters, you know, draw them out so they look, uh, they look fun and neat, you know. Which, of course, I'll do videos on that, too, how to draw, how to draw the letters. And keep in mind, I got the uh, free content on my other channel. So if you don't know about that one, there's a there's a link on the main page, so you can head over and grab some free videos over there. So yeah, there's uh, there's pretty much how I would lay that out and how I'd work out that scene, and the rest, you know, from this point is just adding detail and keep refining the process. So just to recap on everything that I, you know, wanted to try to explain in this, um, keep in mind the, the flow of the art or the flow of the viewer, you know, which should be something like this to here, you know, something like that. Um, the next stage that you could do to bring all this out is you do your shapes of shadows. So for instance, these characters are the predominant, um, obviously the, the main focal point of the scene. So you could draw your shadows in a way that would bring that out further. So, you know, and you don't want to just trace a shape, but, you know, like across here, there could be a, a straighter shadow across the building. You could do these lines on the bricks in a negative white to reverse that. You know, you could do a little bit of shadow on the, the ground here. It doesn't have to be real predominant. Any of these little lines uh, that you add and just slowly kind of texture to point at those guys will do that effectively. You don't have to draw a shape and shade around it, you know. That would actually look, you know, worse in the scene. Um, and of course, to cover up my ugly car, I would probably do a pretty heavy shadow on a lot of this object. It would push his arm forward and help me hide my, my ugly car. And then, uh, you know, make sure to draw like, you know, couple people running away or something like that or maybe stopped and seeing the shock of oh god these guys are about to really brawl and they look like a couple of mean dudes you know so little things like that help sell the scene too um so yeah shapes of shadows motion lines going with the the action and uh, yeah and then this one probably could have been a little bit more reversed uh, to point the viewer out of this page into the next, but you know, they, you know these rules don't always have to be perfect. You know, it's just it's a lot of this is just good, good stuff to abide by when you're drawing this. Uh, later on, we'll talk about when it's appropriate to break the panels. There would have definitely been some cool stuff we could have did here to bust out of the panels, but I want to I want to start off with all the intermediate rules and and ways to construct comic book pages. And then we'll talk about how to, you know, break those rules in certain areas. So hopefully this has been informative for you. Please uh, like and subscribe to the videos and the channel and, uh, you know, tell people when you can. And I really appreciate you watching and staying tuned and more videos are on the way very soon. So we'll talk to you soon. Keep drawing. Keep having fun.